This meeting of the Standing Finance Committee is now resumed. Madam Chairman, I was just advised by the Chief Whip they have no further questions on any heads. So we can go home now. Well, I think the Chief Whip is here and he can speak for himself. <laughs> Head 80, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. Head 80, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. $273,465,000. I will now invite the Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts to make a brief opening statement, not exceeding five minutes. Minister. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Madam Chair. This ministry is mandated to provide strategic direction for both the tourism and creative sectors through policy formulation and collaboration with its stakeholders. These sectors, however, continue to be hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, and therefore the ministry and the agencies to which it has responsibility, the NCC, Tourism Trinidad, Napa Rima Bowl, Queens Hall, Napa and Sapa, have not been able to carry out their core mandates over the last financial year as a consequence of legal restrictions. Notwithstanding, the ministry and its agencies continue to work hard towards recovery along with its stakeholders in anticipation of the reopening of the creative sectors and the return of the travel and tourism industry by sensitizing and training of its stakeholders on its comprehensive COVID-19 protocols, the attraction and support of tourism investment into the accommodation and other tourism sectors, as well as strategic airlift, protocols for the safe return to the hosting of events and for the operations of its performing spaces, among other things. In financial year 2022, the ministry and its agencies will continue along the path to recovery and in ensuring that the tourism and creative sectors working in tandem improve its contribution to the economic and social development of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of $273,465,000 for Head 80 Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts stand part of the schedule. Honorable members, the sum of $273,465,000 for Head 80, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of the current expenditure, the draft estimates of the revenue and expenditure of statutory boards and similar bodies and of the Tobago House of Assembly and the draft estimates of the development program. We shall now proceed to consider the draft estimates of the current expenditure. We are page 396. Subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration. Member from Muruga Tableland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, there's a decrease of $347,000. Can the minister explain? Kindly identify the item. Zero one. Thank you very much. Salaries on. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The explanation for the decrease. During the financial year 2021, there was an administrative error in that some members of the National Museum were paid under this vote in error. Um, and in 2022, that error would be corrected and they would pay, be paid under the correct vote. Member for Maruga Tiburan. Just a follow up. Could the minister um, provide how many members are paid in writing on any of these votes? Any positions? Yep. There are 67 permanent offices, 31 in acting offices, and 27 pos positions filled. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item. 002, Culture Division. Member for Point of Pair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Minister Line Item 16, Contract Employment. Um, could you state what is the present number of contract employees at the ministry presently? If you don't have it, you could. Just a number. 16. Where are we? On page 397. No, Sorry. we've gone no, no, past. We're still at 02. Oh. Okay, so, subhead 02. Goods and Services, item 001, General Admission, Administration. Is this where you are? Ma yes, Member for Madam Point Chair. of Fear. Yes, Madam Chair. 
uh, Minister, line item on <clears throat> 02, line item 16, contract employment, um, 2022, you have an, you getting a $4.6 million uh, allocation. Could you state how many employees under the contract employment are presently employed presently, and what is the uptake for next year? For this fiscal year, sorry. And we are on page 397? Yes. Yes. There are 23 approved contract positions. There are 19 contract employees there are four vacant positions. In terms of the increase, we expect the approval of a number of contract positions, approximately 40, and once we get that approval, um, persons will move into these fixed term contracts. Thank you. Uh, next, next line item, um, Madam Chair. 22 short-term employment, the same type of question I, um, I would like to ask to you. Yeah. In line item 22, short-term employment, um, 4.9, how many, well, 4.5 in this last fiscal, how many short-term employees you have? So for this fiscal, this financial year, there are 34 short-term employees who we expect to pay from this vote, but once the contract positions are approved under the last vote that you inquired about, we expect that this vote, we would expect not to expend this amount of money on this vote. Next line item, oh, Madam Chair, line item 66, Minister, hosting of conferences, seminars, and other functions. 2021, 2.2 .2 million was spent, and, and we know it was due to COVID, it was a small amount that was spent compared to what you had budgeted of 6 million. Um, 2022 is 4 million. Um, could you enlighten us what sort of, I know we're trying to come out of a... The, six or are you on 62? Sorry, 62. No, no, say, yeah, 62, sorry, Minister, 62. You have the Minister of Finance, Russia, you know, in my mind. Sorry, Madam Chair. Um, so... I think the member for Point of Pair finds that you're not engaged enough in the process. Um, ministers, line item 62, promotions, publicity, and printing. 2.2 um, .2 was spent, and we know because of the COVID, et cetera. Given that now your ministry is trying to come out of the pandemic and try to promote the country, um, what sort of expenditure is in, you know, that, you, that will be different um, for this fiscal year as far as promotion and uh, publicity? Well, under this line item, we do advertising. Um, we expect to be printing uh, our COVID-19 protocols booklet. We expect to be printing the national tourism policy that was recently cabinet approved. Um, we expect to do a number of sponsorships for events. Um, and we also share the vote with Tourism Trinidad Limited, where we support some of the activities at that state agency. Thank you. Member from Aruga Tableland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, um, item 43. I notice there's a significant increase. Can the minister indicate if there's a change of um, contract services or new security services will be added on? Um, the payment for arrears in this financial year. Item 002. Culture Division, Member for Komuto Manzanella. It's okay, thank you. Subhead 03, Minor Equipment Purchases, Item 001, General Administration. Item 002, Culture Division. Subhead 04, Current Transfers and Subsidies. Item 001, Regional Bodies. Item 003, United Nations Organizations. Item 005, Non-Profit Institutions. Member for Point Appeal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Minister, line item 04, National Theatre Company. Um, 2.1 million, which is, a, was a, is a, was above the actual budgeted amount of 1.7 million that was given to them for 2021. 
first question is, what was the cause, given that we went through a pandemic in the last 12 months, and the National Theatre Company, as far as creativity, so I'm just trying to understand why that amount is way above the budgeted amount of 1.7. Yeah, well, under this line item, um, you, we pay for all the recurrent expenditure relative to the National Theatre Arts Company. Um, the salaries for the 18 members. We also pay for the rental of storage space for the props and all the set elements. But also, happily, I can report that notwithstanding the, the, the pandemic, they held six performances, three in Port of Spain and three in San Fernando of the play Junction Village. Thank you. I can also assist by saying they paid off some arrears in 21, and they have some more arrears to pay off in 22. That's why it's different from 2020. Member for Buruga Sebalan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, item zero two, contributions to cultural organizations. Um, the revised estimate showed the minister spending $537,000. Could the minister provide us with a list of the organizations that would have benefited? Yeah, I could provide, I could provide that. Um, organizations such as the Bocas Lit, Lit, Lit Fest, um, Dance Dynamics, the National Action Cultural Committee, and I could provide additional information to you in writing. Um, under this vote, we did receive um, a considerable decrease in requests because of the restrictions relative to the pandemic. Thank you, Minister. I'll take the rest in writing with regards to the allocation pool group. Item 007, households. Item 009, other transfers. Member from Maruga Tibala. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, with regards to NAFA and SAFA, if the minister could give us probably in writing a breakdown as to how the 2021 revised estimate um, was spent on these um, different organizations. Well, this is to take care of the recurrent expen expenses, expenditure for the public auditorium at Napa. So under this vote, we pay salaries, um, security costs, photocopy, rental, garbage collection, landscaping, ele elevator servicing, etc. cetera. Item 011, transfers to state enterprises. Member for point of bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Minister, line item 04, Tourism Trinidad Destination Management Company. Um, 2021, 7.9 was spent in the revised figure, 11.8 for 2022 million. Um, I'm assuming this is the only vote they get from your ministry, and um, could you say how many employees are employed with this company, management company? And there are 27 contract employees employed at the TTL, and there are 23 vacant positions. And uh, how, and they, their main purpose is, is, is what? This company compared to Tourism Trinidad Limited? This is Tourism Trinidad Limited. Oh, this is Trinidad. Yeah. So is the name change or is it one and the same? No, it's no name change. TTDMC. So it's one and the same company then? Yes. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Member for St. Augustine. Madam Chair, could the Minister advise if the item under 01107 reflects, it indicates here that it reflects a loan, could the Minister provide the conditions of the loan and the conditions of repayment? In 2020, Cabinet approved um, that the NCC take a loan from uh, the First Citizens Bank to do two things. One, um, $25 million was allocated towards the cultural relief grants, and the $75 million was allocated to NCC to pay outstanding creditors. 
So does this mean that all the persons, all the creditors, the NCC have been, all the debts have been cleared? All uh, the debts of the NCC? I cannot advise on that right now. But certainly the $75 million would have been expended all right, over the um, last financial year. Well, of course, that would be a concern because many of those service providers are also facing hard times with the COVID in this, um, in this sphere of work. So I would like if you could provide well, remember, the I'm, information. I'm allowed to do some leeway, but remember, this is the same issue we're talking about, loan. So your, your question was um, really a proper one when you asked about the conditions of the loan and, and, and repayments and so on. I allowed you a little leeway because based on what the minister mm -hmm. answered. But asking that particular further question does yes. not come under this payment. You may get an opportunity a little okay. later on. Well, here. yes, I could always okay. file on questions on notice. No, no, but you may get a little come. opportunity here. Thank you. Okay, so you may. The loan was taken and to pay the cultural relief grants as well as to pay outstanding creditors. It was because of that hardship you spoke about. Okay, so we now go on to subhead 06, current transfers to statutory boards and similar bodies. Honorable members, we now move on to the draft estimates. Huh? We in 06? Yeah, but that, what you're looking at is a summary page. And therefore, if we go on to the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure, you get the details. Okay? So we're going to page 517 of the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure of statutory boards and similar bodies and of the Tobago House of Assembly. 20, Queen's Hall, subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration. Is that where you are pointed up here? Um, NCC, when you get to MC, NCC. Member for St. Augustine. <coughs> Thank you. Minister, under 01, personal expenditure, zero um, salaries and cost of living allowances. I noticed that there is an increase there. Does Queen's Hall intend to increase the number of employees that are paid under this vote? Yes, there are 12 permanent employees that are paid under this vote and there are six vacant positions. Queen's Hall has indicated that they intend to hire at least one or two persons under, to be paid under this vote. This vote is for permanent workers, correct? Yes. Okay, thanks. Member for Baruga Tableland. But we got, we're not on 02. We're still on 01. No, Sorry. still on 001. 02. Subhead 02, Goods and Services, Item 001, General Administration, Member for Maruga Tableland. Item 16, contract services. Uh, Minister, can you provide us with how many persons is currently employed underneath this line item and also how much persons will be catered for in this increase? There are 16 persons presently paid under this line item and they intend to employ some more persons during this financial year, but I could not tell you how many at this time. Would these posts be advertised or because I've seen this? The post the will be advertised and okay. it will be done under an acceptable and transparent okay. recruitment process. Thank you, Minister. Minister, with regards to the janitorial services, item 37 and also item 43, um, there is a significant increase on any of these two line items. Well, it's so not these really, are janitorial services and security services. Yeah, well, it's not really a, a significant... Well, an increase like that will only be explained by a change in service provider or an increase in the allotment. Right. I'm seeing here in the explanation that there are some outstanding commitments to be paid over this financial year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nearly noted, Minister. Member for St. Augustine. Okay. Subhead 03, Minor Equipment Services Purchases. Item 001, General Administration. 
subhead 04, current transfers and subsidies, item 007, households. Member for St. Augustine. Yes. Um, under households gratuities, uh, Mr. Minister, I noticed that there is um, a significant amount less there um, allocate, in terms of your allocation. We have seen in some other areas where gratuities remain outstanding to people long, for long periods because it was not properly allocated for. Can you indicate if you have, if you are in a position now to know exactly what gratuities will be owed and if this amount could cover it given that you have a decrease in the allocation? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the situation you described is not accurate in this case. Um, most of the outstanding gratuities have been paid in 2021, and the 921,571 is sufficient for those members who will qualify for gratuity in this period to be paid. Okay. We now go on to 21, Naparima Bowl. Subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration. Subhead 02, goods and services, item 001, general administration. Member for Maruga Tableland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, through you to the Minister, item 22, short term employment. I see there's a significant um, decrease of 1.7. Um, Minister, how would this directly affect the persons currently employed underneath this particular line item? This is um, subhead 16. Sorry, item description 16 on five, page yeah, 529. 22, sh 22, short term employment. 22, okay. Right. So during the, finan during the 2021 financial year, um, many of the persons who were paid under this vote will move towards the short-term employment vote because we had the contract positions approved. Minister, um, you could repeat for clarity, sick. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, in 2021, $2.2 million mm -hmm was provided as an allocation under this line item, short-term employment. And it was utilized, yes. And during the period, a number of contract positions were approved by cabinet. And therefore, the persons who were formerly paid under this vote will now be paid under the contract employment vote. And if you look at the contract employment vote, you will see that there is an increase. Yes. yes. Minister, could you provide us with the number of individuals underneath these both um, items, 16 and 22? There are, is it 26? I believe it's 26, but I can give you that in writing. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Minister. Subhead 03, Minor Equipment Purchases, Item 001, General Administration. Subhead 04, current transfers and subsidies, item 007, households. 22, National Carnival Commission of Trinidad and Tobago. We are page 529. Subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration. Subhead 02, goods and services, item 001, general administration. Member for Maruga Tableland. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I would like the Minister to still look at item 08, rent and lease office accommodation. There's a significant increase. Is it that a new office space is going to be um, rented or is it ours? Could the Minister give us an explanation? There's an increase of $2.4 million. This would appear to be arrears. Arrears would. But Minister, if you'll allow me, you was allocated um, 4.9 in 2021. The revise um, brought you at 
So why wasn't the arrears, why was the bills brought forward and you had the necessary allocation to pay the arrears? Well, I can give you the explanation in writing, but sometimes by the time the revised estimates are um, compiled and published, bills come afterwards and it may actually have been paid. But the 4.9, as I'm being advised, um, this is around the figure that they pay in rent for office accommodation and storage. Okay. Thank you, Minister. Minister, if you would um, move to item 16, contract employment. Um, there's a significant increase of 2.6. Could you tell us how many more individuals this would cater for, and if you could give us the positions in writing? Thank you, Minister. Um, Minister, with regards to item 28, other contracted services, we see a significant decrease of 1.5. Could you tell me how this is directly going to affect your ministry? in 2.5. Ministry. Not the ministry, NCC. NCC. My apologies. No. No. But if you ask a different question, I could perhaps provide the answer to you in writing. Well, I've contracted services. Um, okay. This so, is NCC, right? And we have the... Um, the head of this uh, relevant organization stating that probably that he's hopeful of Carnival 2022. And we are seeing a significant decrease in this other contracted services. A line item that will be needed such that, um, should Carnival 2022 happen. So. Well, if Carnival 2022 is to happen, um, I'm certain that the NCC could get funding, it's a statutory body, they can apply for a loan and they can host a carnival. So I don't see this as impacting, I mean, other contracted services, this usually um, considers sanitation, garbage removal, and that sort of thing. Noted, Minister, thank you. Subhead, zero three minor equipment purchases, Item 001, General Administration. Subhead 04, Current Transfers and Subsidies. Item 007, Households. Item 008, Subsidies. Member for St. Augustine. Yes. Minister, it is noted that in 2021, you had no transfers to the carnival bodies, which is understood. Um, sorry, in 2021, although you had no allocation, you went on to spend 3.17 million there. And this year, there is an allocation of $9.3 million transfers to carnival bodies. If this 9.3 means that you are planning and hoping that there is a carnival 2022, can you explain the f spending of 3.1 in 2021 when there was no carnival? So in the estimates in under 2021, it was an estimating error to put um, a zero allocation in that vote. In 2021, the 3.179 uh, money would have been vied in because under this vote, you pay for some of the recurrent, in fact, most of the recurrent expenditure for the special interest groups, Pancho and Bago, Chuco, and the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival Bands Association. So the $9.3 million would be to assist in providing subventions to those special interest groups and other special interest groups. Can you provide a breakdown for the spending in 2021 and what do you intend to spend it on in 2022? Yes. Thanks. 
Honorable members, we will now move on to the draft estimates of the development program. We are at page 168. Subhead 09, development program, consolidated fund, item 003, economic infrastructure. Member for point of appeal. D, um, item D, tourism takes care of that, right? Madam Chair, I can ask a question there. And the D, tourism, on page 168. Yeah, sorry. Minister, under D, tourism, line item, uh, zero, zero, 001 tourism sites and attraction upgrade 10.5 million is allocated for this fiscal year to upgrade sites could you state what sites um, in the pipeline to be upgraded tourism sites Las Cuevas beach facility Manzanella beach facility Vesini beach facility the Labre pitch lake facility uh, Paramin Village Lookout, hmm. Maracas Beach Corrective Works, Galera Point Lighthouse. The last the lighthouse, which was the, was the last one? You know, Sorry, Galera Point Lighthouse. Galera Point. Tuco Lighthouse. Okay. Oh. Um, I can continue, Madam Chair, on different line items. Um, can I go down to line item um, 013, uh, Minister? Trinidad Tobago Hotel and Guest House Room Stock Upgrade Incentive Project, $2 million as a new project. Could you state how the, um, the guest houses will benefit from, from this $2 million, how it's planned to be distributed? Um, this line item um, is used to facilitate the TORP program, which is the Tourism Accommodation Upgrade Program. It's a reimbursable program um, that's offered to hotels and guest houses where you are reimbursed 50% of the spend up to a maximum um, for the upgrade of hotel rooms. It's two um, follow-up question, Madam Chair. Give us $2 million for this new project. This is a not a new project. Huh? This is not a new project. Well, the $2 million is a small amount given the, the amount of guest houses that might want to facilitate or access this facility? Mm -hmm. Is there a cap on the amount of, of the a ceiling on the, on the amount that they are able to access at any given point in time? Yes, it is a ceiling. Um, I believe it's once every, I think it's once every either three or five years. And the value, there's a, a, a value ceiling. Value. value ceiling is up to a reimbursement of $1.5 million per property. Right, so that's the point I'm trying to make, Minister. This 1.5 million is your value ceiling. Yeah. Your budgeted amount is $2 million. So literally, yeah. you're talking one guest house, in a sense, or one hotel. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's small and, and medium guest houses and hotels. So what we do is we gauge the appetite for persons to enter into this program. So it depends on what applications you have in and when you expect the upgrading works to be completed. Because once the upgraded works are completed and audit is completed, then you will receive the reimbursement. So it's an estimating exercise, and we believe that the $2 million would be sufficient in this financial year. Okay, if you say so. Um, line item, Madam Chair, so. can I go on? 014, development and implementation of a sport tourism master plan. Um, $975,000 is anticipated to develop this master plan. Um, what is the, I know the word sport tourism, but what is the idea between, what, what is your plan as, as a minister of tourism with this sports tourism? What was the idea behind it and, and how would tourism, the Ministry of Tourism assist with this as, a part, as opposed to the Ministry of Sport? Right. So. We have at the ministry, over the last financial year, developed our uh, sub-policy on sport tourism. What follows a policy, a tourism policy, is a tourism master plan. 
So we have here a sport tourism master plan that we are in this financial year going to produce. So what that sport tourism policy master plan would do, it would, we would work with the Ministry of Sport, all the NGBs and other stakeholders to reduce into a specific plan how we are going to attract sport tourism in Trinidad and Tobago. For example, how do you win the events? How do you get persons, international bodies, to want to come within Trinidad and Tobago to hold large sport tourism events? Then what happens once those bodies, once those international bodies and visitors arrive how do you manage these large numbers and, of course, the operations around that? You see, between 2010 and 2015, you all went ahead and you, you built some, you, you commenced the construction of a number of world-class facilities, but that is where you stopped. You did no such planning with respect to sports tourism, so every time we wish to attract a major event, we always have to start from scratch and appoint a local organizing committee and get PTSC to provide transportation and speak to the hoteliers and we have to go and find hospitals in case anybody gets injured, etc. So what this Port Tourism Master Plan will go, it's a detailed plan of how you manage large sporting events. Sorry. I'll follow up question. Minister, do you have a consultant on board to develop this sports tourism master plan on, on already? Not right now, no. During the, the next fiscal year, we will get on board a consultant to guide the process of getting the sport tourism master plan. But as far as we are developing the sport tourism master plan, we also have, over the next financial year, a number of large sporting activities the under-19 cricket, um, under cricket World Cup. We have um, the P1 circuit moto uh, boat racing circuit. Um, and we also have the international hash event that will come within the first six months of next year. Thank you, Minister. Um, that's about it for me. Item. 005 multi-sectoral and other services, infrastructure development fund, item 004 social infrastructure. Member for point of pair. Yes, Madam Chair, 00, this is on page 253, right, Madam Chair? Yeah. Um, line item 006 Queen's Park Savannah Grandstand Upgrade Project, $4 million. Minister, could you, um, is this the cater for Carnival 2022? This is 006? Yes, Queen's Park Savannah Grand Santa upgrade project, $4 million. No, so what the, um, the board at the NCC, they've come up with a, a proposal where they would de redevelop and retrofit um, a floor a mezzanine floor in the Queen's Park Savannah Grandstand to house the offices, the head office of the NCC, as well as offices for the special interest groups, Pan Trinbago, um, Chuco, and the TTCBA. And once this project is completed and they are relocated, it would save the over $4 million that we pay in rent annually, as you saw in the rental accommodation vote on the NCC. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a follow-up, I didn't get your, are we having Carnival 2022? 006. 006? Line that, item, that, let me go into the next you know item. But you know that is not allowed. But Zero, track. Can I go to 007, Madam Chair? Sure. 007, Arapita Avenue Enhancement Project, $2 million. Could you? Help me understand what is envisioned by this expenditure 
uh, for Arapita Avenue. We all know Arapita Avenue, how critical it is. Well, the Arapita Avenue Enhancement Project um, is where the, the ministry envisions Arapita Avenue as uh, an entertainment zone, which is an attraction within um, tourism speaking. We, it's organically built into an enter entertainment zone already, where there are a number of bars and um, a number of bars, casinos, etc. Um, a number of large events take place on Arapita Avenue, like Pan on the Avenue, etc. So, what we intend to do is to enhance the Arapita Avenue. With this two million dollars, we expect to um, formalize some of the, the plans. Uh, we expect to build the creation of a, a large grand arch at the two ends of Arapita Avenue and to do some small enhancement works within this financial, like um, repairing the sidewalks, etc. Thank you, Minister. But uh, just a, a follow up this $2 million and, and what, what you described, how does that? Um, relate to the Port of Spain Corporation and, and do they get involved in this project? The well, this is a part of the, the government's revitalization of Port of Spain Trust. So we work hand in hand with uh, the Ministry of Planning as well as the Port of Spain City Corporation. Um, it may have escaped your notice, that, but we had a consultation during the last financial year. It was, it was virtual, and, um, but well attended and we continue to have consultations along with the Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, and we believe that this is a project that would certainly enhance our tourism product and enhance the city of Port of Spain. Thank you. Honorable, sorry, Member for Moruga Tableland. Madam Chair, with regards to the remedial works of SAPA, I was just um, curious as to why none of the works was undertaken um, as the revised estimate is reflecting nil, and then it, the five million was allocated back. Yeah, but during um, the last financial year, there were several restrictions with respect to works, and uh, further to that, once we received vaccines, uh, SAPA was listed as a mass vaccination site, so no works were undertaken during that financial year. Um, Madam Chair, if you put me, permit me one more question with regards to 005, Napri Mabul. Could the minister itemize um, the redevelopment project? Could you just give us a snapshot as to what we can expect? The amphitheater and auditorium, incorporation of seating for persons with disabilities, carpet replacement, stage repairs, fire suppression upgrades, drainage upgrades, and also a small new building, two-story building, um, for the dressing rooms, multi-purpose rooms, etc. That will see As us it, going into the next fiscal, anyhow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be done in phases. If you know Naparima Bowl, the, the dressing rooms are made and built out of containers, as well as the, the main office, it's out mm -hmm. of, um, cargo containers retrofitted. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's for. But yes, it is going to be uh, Roll out perhaps a three-year program, yeah. OK. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Honorable members, the question is that it's sum of $273,465,000 for Head 80, Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and the Arts stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the eyes have it, the sum of $273,465,000 for Head 80, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, now stand part of the schedule. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you to the other representatives from the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. Head 79, Ministry of Sport and Community Development. And for the guidance of members, we'll be starting at page 384 of the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. And we will also go to page 164 of the draft estimates of development program.
Ministry of Sport and Community Development, $297,761,000. I will now invite the Minister of Sport and Community Development to make a brief opening statement for a maximum of five minutes. Minister. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Ministry of Sport and Community Development seeks to build our nation's human capital through the development of athletic talent and community life in Trinidad and Tobago. This ministry represents an ever important intersectionality of community life and physical activity. We are maximizing the interconnection of the three divisions, physical education and sport, community development, and mediation to reap the fullest benefits for all citizens. The ministry's mandate is supported by the three state entities under its purview. The sport, the sport or sport company of Trinidad and Tobago, the National Commission for Self-Help Limited, and Export Centers Company Limited. The ministry continues to make necessary adjustments to offer a suite of programs virtually as it eagerly anticipates a return to normalcy, or as we say in sport, a return to play. I will briefly share the functions of each division to provide a comprehensive overview of the ministry's mandate. Firstly, the mission of the Division of Physical Education and Sport is to enrich lives through total participation, quality training, and excellence in sport. The two pillars of the national sport policy, total participation in sport and high performance in sport, are the drivers behind the mission. This year, we successfully executed the Pink Rain campaign, which promotes women and girls in sport. This initiative encourages females to get actively involved in physical activity. We hosted panel discussions. We hosted conversations with women in sport. We created videos of relating to sport training in order to enlighten girls and women about different sporting disciplines. And we conducted the Girls Run TT Challenge with over 360 girls completed, which challenge to complete 70 miles in three months. The Shaping Communities Initiative offers capacity building to community coaches and sport administrators to help them to better manage and lead their sporting organizations and provide uh, support to the athletes. The Community Development Division focuses on a multifaceted approach to community intervention through several programs by working closely with the community organizations and villages and community councils to become registered and promote special interests relating to women, sports, youth, culture, agriculture, social and economic issues. Then we have the community education which is non-formal education programs to complement the formal education system of Trinidad and Tobago. So we have training in domestic support, skills training projects, entrepreneurship, etc. We have the care program where we provide support to uh, community groups doing community projects. We have expanded our uh, community education program to include a Trinidad and Tobago online community voices where uh, we speak to real issues impacting individuals throughout Trinidad and Tobago. This year we ramped up our uh, short skills program and uh, provided training in over 30 courses to over 10,000 participants. This year the Prime Minister's Best Village Trophy Competition hosted two activities, the Best Written Script Competition and the Great Yourself Competition, where we sought to improve the writing skills of uh, the Best Village community and to uh, promote a culture of agriculture within the communities. Our Community Mediation Services Division uh, considers that sustainable social transformation of our society and the achievement of social justice requires the permeation and pervasive presence of restorative behavior through our society. We have held various programs geared at developing a culture of peace and restoration in our communities. Uh, this is a brief synopsis of uh, the ministry, its mandate, and some of what we have done over 2021, and I'm now available for your questioning. Thank you, Minister. Honorable members, the question is that it's sum of $297,761,000. The head, 79, 
The Ministry of Sport and Community Development stand part of the schedule. Honorable members, the sum of $297,761,000 for Head 79, Ministry of Sport and Community Development, is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure and the draft estimates of development program. We shall now proceed to consider the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. We are at page 384. Subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration, member for Karani Central. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, outline, um, outline item 01, salaries and costs of living allowance. Honorable Minister, I see there's an increase in the allocation for this financial year. Can you advise what will account for this increase? We are expecting that our vacant positions will be filled. Uh, right now we have a number of uh, permanent offices, 142, uh, 33 uh, filled, 90 vacant. A uh, number of vacant offices with bodies 63 and those without bodies 27. So we are hoping that some of the vacant positions are filled. Member for Karen Central. Another item, line item 14, remuneration to, to members of cabinet appointed, I guess, as committees. I see there's a, there's, in, in 2021, um, there was an estimate of 100,000, 10,000 was spent, and for this financial year, uh, you're proposing 50,000. Can you indicate what is the purpose of this um, line item um, in terms of what committees are envisaged yeah. to be used under this line item? Just to capture the cost for the UNESCO uh, Committee on Anti-Doping, which is going to be uh, established this year. The cabinet note has already been passed, so it's about populating the committee. So that would be to cover their fees or whatever is paid to them. Member for Kuvano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 01, salaries and cost of living allowance. The minister indicated a number of vacant positions to be filled. Can the minister advise the number of vacant positions if and, and a breakdown of those positions in writing? I can provide it to you. That information is in the book provided to us. Um, in addition to that, I already stated that the number of vacant positions are 27. Member for Cuba, so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, um, through you, Minister, for example, the, uh, in 04, the um, line item allowances to monthly paid officers, and um, also the allowances in uh, other heads in different divisions within your ministry. Um, are you? Uh, <coughs> is there any outstanding monies owed under these um, sub items in terms of allowances to monthly paid and allowances to daily paid? Employees. Okay, not under this specific item. This specific item, uh, we are catering for an additional DPS right now. We have one permanent secretary and one deputy permanent secretary, and we're hoping to get another deputy permanent secretary within this fiscal year. So this uh, item doesn't cover that. Okay. Member for Gouverneur. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 05, government contribution to NIS. Um, can the Honourable Minister advise uh, if it is that there are outstanding arrears uh, in this line item also, seeing that the estimate for 2021, 800,000 was not fully utilised? Okay. Um, like I said earlier, we plan on having these positions filled. So once the positions are filled, we're going to have to pay and I ask for those people who fill the positions. So that is relating to the positions that we're hoping to fill. And I'm seeing, um, Minister, for 2022, there's an increase. What was estimated for 2021? 800,000. This line item estimate for 2022 is 950,000. Um, can you 
indicate if it is that there's additional positions that has been added on to the structure? No, like I said before, we have vacant positions which we hope to be filled by the public service. Once those people come on, we have to pay the NIS, so that is to cover the NIS. Yes, Minister, but what, what was budgeted for in 2021 was 800,000, and I believe that would have been taking what you are saying into consideration for the persons on, on the structure. What I'm seeing here is an increase now of 150 to last year's estimate. Member, last year, those positions were not filled. So hence the reason you saw an allocation and then a revised estimate. This year, we are hoping that those positions are filled. As it wasn't filled, that's why the revised that's estimate is 650. That's my final answer. As it wasn't filled, that is why the revised estimate is 650,000 and it wasn't utilized. The full 800,000 was not utilized. So I understand that aspect of it. What I'm asking is in terms of the structure, there's an additional 150,000 for this financial year. Member, I think you've asked the minister that three times and she has clearly explained what has happened. What she says is, in 2021, there were vacancies. They expected it to be filled, so they budgeted 800,000. It didn't happen, that's why they were revised downwards. They expect in this year to fill vacancies, and that's why they've done it. I think that that answer was given three or four times. So then why are Item we not- Item 002, Physical Education and Sport Division. Member for Carney Central. Um, to you, Madam Chair. Can the minister indicate uh, the number of persons who would have been employed as of September 30th, 2020, and the number of persons which will now be employed at the end of this financial year, provided that all the vacancies are filled? Madam Chair, this line item covers um physical education division where we have 118 permanent offices 40 filled a uh, number of vacant offices 78 number of vacant offices without bodies 18 with bodies sorry 18 and 60 without bodies madam chairman thank you yes Item 003, Community Development Division. Member for Coover North. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 01, salaries and cost of living allowance. 2021 estimate of 11 million, revised estimate of 9.2 million. Can the minister advise uh, the reason for the decrease in the revised estimate? The reason for the decrease in the You want to know the reason for the decrease in 2021? That's your question? The decrease in the revised estimate mm -hmm. of 2021. You want to know why it's 9.2? That's correct. That's what was provided to us by the Ministry of Finance. Sorry? That's what was provided to us by the Ministry of Finance. That is all that was provided by the Ministry of Finance? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the ministry, so this line item was allocated 11 million, but the releases was only 9.2 million. At the point in time when these books were printed, yeah. Did this, uh, did this affect uh, um, the workers not receiving their salaries? M Madam Chairman, I think that all the uh, people who responded, and I think I need to explain again, that these are estimates. These books are printed at a specific time. It doesn't take into consideration the releases you got after the books have been printed. So this is an estimate, yes? So when this book was printed, this is what was provided to us by the Ministry of Finance. If more money came in after it was printed, then that would be reflected later when the final tally is done. 
Item 004, Best Village. Subhead 02, Goods and Services. Item 001, General Administration. Member for Carney Central. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm at line item 08, Rent, Lease of Office Equipment, Office Accommodation and Storage. Um, I see there's an increase, Honorable Minister, of approximately 500,000. Can you indicate what is, um, or advise, what is the reason for the increase? That is to pay outstanding bills. That's for arrears. Excuse me, Madam Speaker, there's some cross talk here, for That's a bit distracting. Okay, so members, we don't have much longer, and I guess everybody's tired, so the attention span might be waning for a lot of us. Okay, so, Carney Central, if maybe you could sort yes. of focus this way, you may not be distracted by other people. But, Please proceed. Yes. Madam Speaker, they are very, some, can be sometimes very loud. I, um, Madam Speaker, on the same line item, will the Minister uh, please indicate um, in writing, or if she has the information now, um, who is the landlord, or the number of buildings that are being rented, uh, the amount is being rented for, and the term of the lease? Madam Speaker, the amount of the this line item covers renting uh, Nicholas Tower, Chabco Building, where the accounts unit is housed, uh, Chepstow House, where HR and Best Village is housed, and uh, we are looking at a rent of approximately $510,000. Member for Coover North. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. And on that same line item, if the Honorable Minister can provide the listing of the landlords. Um, also line item 22, short-term employment. Uh, this estimate for 2021 was 2 million, but the revised estimate was 6.4 million, an additional 4.45 million spent here. Can the Minister explain the significant increase in this line item? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to answer the landlord for Nicholas Towers is Nicholas Towers Limited. Job Co Building is GV Holdings. For Chepstow House is Chepstow Development and Co. What's, what's your next question after that? You asked another question. Line item 22. Line item 22. Also, if the minister can advise the number of persons that were recruited under this line item? Item number 22, please. Honorable Minister, line item 22, short-term employment. The 2021 estimate was 2 million, but the revised estimate was 6.45 million an additional spending of $4.45 million. Can you kindly explain the reason for the significant uh, increase in spending? We had a development of a new ministry where we brought over um, the sport division from the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs. So that's the capture of the officers that came uh, from there. This line item uh, covers uh, 89 short-term officers. And can the minister advise uh, how we went about recruiting persons under this line item? Inherited we inherited these people, as I said, from the previous sport ministry. Remember, we, as I said, when we started, we have Ministry of Community Development, we have the Mediation Division, and the Sports unit or division came over from Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs. So we inherited these people. You, you, the persons you inherited, that short-term employment would be what duration? The duration for short-term employment? It varies. It varies. And there would have been persons previously in this ministry that were employed under this line item? 
other than the persons that the ministry inherited? This line item covers where several, also covers where several positions had expired and we kept the officers on short term until you go to cabinet and ask for more life in the position. All, all right. Um, so no new persons were brought on this line item 22. This covers short term for the entire ministry. The specific line item we're talking about here. Yes, Madam Minister. What I was asking, and based on your response, your first response was persons employed under this line item was brought on from another ministry merging to your ministry. And that is how you go about inheriting and persons. And then I added, then I added also for positions where the position have expired, you have to return to cabinet to extend the life in the position or to add more life to the position. We call the persons on short term until we get life in the position and could advertise the position. Thank you, Honorable Minister. So there were no new persons that was brought in under this line item? Not to my knowledge. Can you kindly provide us with a listing of the persons uh, under this you, line item can, at the beginning? You, I can give you the... Um, at the beginning of the financial no, term and at the end you, of the financial term? I can give term? you my figures right now. This is going to be my final answer. Uh, we have communications, three. Legal, one. Uh, Minister Secretariat, three. Information technology, one. Project management, three officers. Human resources, nine officers. Policy and planning, seven officers. Community mediation, four officers. Physical education and sport, 32 officers. Uh, community development, four officers. Best village program, two officers. And regional complexes, 17 officers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can I get in writing? Under this line item, the remuneration for these positions also. That account for the 6.4 million that was spent. Minister? Sure. Yes? Okay, so can we move on? Item 002, physical education. Member for Kearney Central. I was on 01. You're still on 001, yes? Yes, please. Um, I'm at line item 13, maintenance of vehicles. <coughs> I realize uh, there was a, a budgeted amount of an estimated amount of 175,000 non being used um, in 2021. Can, I, can I, Honorable Minister indicate um, why no amounts of money was used in this line item? Madam Chair, whilst the uh, vehicles were maintained or serviced, uh, we would have a raise for these. At point in time, this was printed. It may not have captured that figure, but I know that uh, vehicles were serviced, and therefore we'll have a raise that we'll have to pay in this new fiscal. Okay. Thank you. Um, just just an, uh, a note of housekeeping. I'm having some difficulty hearing you, Minister. I'm not sure about the others. It's, I'm not hearing not, you clearly. I'm not hearing you clearly. Just yeah, a housekeeping. Yes. Something is with the mics. <laughs> so we we'll all try a little harder. Yes, thanks. Two, physical education and sport division. Member for Coover North. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 22, short-term employment. Uh, there wasn't any allocation for 2021. Uh, there's a uh, allocation for 2022 of 1.75 million. Can the minister advise uh, what this uh, 1.75 million is? Madam Chair, in uh, going forward, I think what is being done here is giving short -term, a short-term vote to each unit. Last year, short-term employment was captured in total under general administration. So what is being done here, and you would see as we move on to the other and the other divisions, you see a new line item of short-term under community development, a new line item of short-term 
employment on the uh, sport, as what we are seeing here now. So persons under this line item, 22 short-term employment under physical education and sports division, mm -hmm. these persons uh, are employed, persons are employed in the system that are being paid for under this vote? This is where they will be paid from in the new fiscal. In the last fiscal, everything was captured under the first vote we discussed, general admin. But now you're seeing sport having its own short-term vote now and uh, community development having its own short-term vote in going forward. Line, line item 12, materials and supplies. Uh, that was budgeted at 300,000, but no money was spent in the revised estimate. Can the minister advise? This specific um, vote covers material and supplies for swimming pools, and we had an excess of supplies from the previous fiscal year. So the unit to use the supplies from the previous fiscal year. Uh, we also have to take into consideration that for the most part, uh, the pools were closed for this fiscal year. So they utilized the stock from last fiscal year. Hence the reason there is no spending there. Thank you, Madam Minister. Madam Minister, line item 16, contract employment. Uh, can you kindly advise uh, the, this revised estimate of $2.47 million? Can you can I kindly advise uh, the number of persons uh, on contract employment uh, when the contracts are due to expire and um, a breakdown of the various remuneration to the contract employment? Madam Speaker, my answer to that question is we have a total of 69 contract positions in under that vote. Uh, you have 56 vacant and 13 uh, filled. And this would uh, consist of like um, sport officers who are helping with the Pink Green campaign, also sport officers who are helping with the Shape in Community uh, programs. Uh, so that's my answer to this question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can we writing with the remunerations for the contract positions? Sure. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Ms. Central. Uh, Honorable Minister, line item 37, um, janitorial services. I see that no amounts were spent um, on the revised estimate. I, I'll take into consideration the answer, the last answer you give to my last question, which dealt with maintenance of vehicles. Um, but it will be hard to imagine that you have not received any or made any payments for the entire financial year. In this case, this covers only um, one swimming pool. That's the swimming pool in Sovereign Trace, Lavantil, and we expect a raise for, for this specific vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'd like to draw the Minister's attention to line item 17, training. So green. In the revised, in the revised estimate, um, no money was utilized in that this line item. Can the Honourable Minister advise why is that? What's the line item, please? Uh, Minister? 17. Okay, and what's your question? No, I recognize the minister not paying attention. She's disturbed by the prime minister there. But let's move on. Line item oh, so you 17. don't have a question on that line no, item? No, line item 17. I asked a question, but I recognize you weren't paying attention because you were being disturbed. So let's focus on line item 17. Training, $50,000 was allocated for this line item, but none was utilized. Mm -hmm. Can you kindly advise why is that? This specific line item covers the swimming pools. For the most part, they were closed last year. So this covers training for the um, officers who work there. So that was not done last year. It should be done this year, hoping that uh, we would reopen and return to play soon. 
Thank you, Madam Minister. Madam Minister, line item 43, security services. It was budgeted at 500,000. However, only 200,000 was utilized. Is it uh, that less security services was provided? Is it that certain places were closed? Can you advise the, re the reason for the decrease in the estimate and okay. the revised estimate? This is similar to the last vote, janitorial services. This covers only one swimming pool, Sogren Trace, Lavant Hill, and I also anticipate for this vote that we're going to have a raise there. Item 003, Community Development Division. Item 004, Best Village. Member for Coover North. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Contract Employment, line item 16. This line, this line item was allocated 1.6 million, but only 700,000 was utilized. Can the minister kindly explain why? We do not run the full Best Village program uh, over this fiscal year due to COVID. In my introduction, I stated that we only did uh, the Best Script competition, which is a writing competition. So you, you recognize you didn't see Larry and Rive and those types of uh, competitions this year. We only did Go It Yourself and the One Script. So uh, we didn't get to execute Best Village in the way we would have liked to. So hopefully next year uh, we get to go out there and do Best Village in a bigger, better way. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. If it is we are planning to do Best Village in a bigger, better way, why it is only 750,000 has been estimated for this year when 1.6 million was estimated last year. Can you advise the number of contract positions also under this vote for last year that the estimate was 1.6, and why it is we are estimating less than half of that for this year? Contract positions, you said? Contract employment, line 16. Uh, for Best Village, the bulk of their, their um, employment is through the public service establishment. However, you have um, zero, we have 11 positions vacant on the contract for Best Village. So. It all depends on what happens as it relates to COVID, um, how we execute Best Village, what's going to be virtual, and what's not going to be virtual. Uh, for the most part, we've seen in Tobago, some of their competitions in the Tobago Heritage was executed virtually. And um, so you don't have the Best Village folks on the ground as we usually would have them uh, training in the community centers with the best village groups and so on, because uh, most of our community centers have been closed. So uh, it's a wait and see type of situation. We do what we can virtually, but if you really know and understand best village, it's a real touchy feely type of activity where people want to get out there and interact. So. Uh, if uh, the situation as it relates to COVID improves come next year, then we can do a environment or come back to Parliament to get more money. But, as it, but for right now, even as it relates to the number of people who are willing to get vaccinated so that we can really get out there and do Best Village like we're accustomed to, it's a wait and see type of situation. So we will continue to do what we have done this year virtually, which is one script and, um, and grow it yourself. And we continue to look for ways to transform the other parts of West Village into a virtual platform. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. Madam Minister, would you be able to provide us with uh, um, a breakdown of this 700,000 that was utilized for 2021, the contract positions and in the remuneration for each position? We had uh, less than 10 um, Best Village assistants whose contract ended during the year, and that was not renewed because we didn't go back out to do Best Village. So that's my answer to that question. Item 005, Mediation Centers, member for Karini Center. Uh, Madam Chair, to you, line item 08, Lease, office accommodation, and storage. Um, Madam Minister, I see there's a 
increase of approximately $750,000. Uh, what will uh, account for this increase in this financial year? We are hoping to get more um, locations so we could spread the services of the mediation unit uh, wider. So we are hopeful that we'll have uh, more locations. So, so there's a plan to have more mediation centers. Have you identified areas in which you'll be targeting for expansion? Right now we have uh, mediation centers in... Just give me one second. <coughs> yes, right now we have mediation center. We have the head office, which is at uh, in Frederick Street. We are also running the um, North Main mediation center out of Frederick Street. Uh, we have the Eastern, we have also MTS Plaza in Aranguez, the Social Services Center and Main Road to Napuna. You have the um, Kunupia Center, you have the Kuva Center also, and one in point 14. So um, as it relates to more locations in the new fiscal year, I am aware that we also plan to have one in, in the Port of Spain area. Item 006, Dwight York Stadium. Member for Coover North. Madam Chair, I had a question on 005 Mediation Center. Will I be allowed to ask that question? Go ahead. I'm just allowing one question so we can move on, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 16, contract employment. Can the Honorable Minister advise the number of persons uh, that uh, was uh, contracted under this line item for the revised estimate of 2021, the 4.7 million that was spent. And in addition to the number of positions, can the minister provide a listing of those positions and the remuneration to go with it? I can receive that in writing. Mediation Center, we had 31 um, positions for contract employment. There really is a total of 59 contract positions, but we only had 31 filled and we have 28 vacant. Would the minister be able to provide us with a breakdown of those contract positions and the remuneration in writing? And for line item 43, security services. Uh, we're doing much more than I allowed. Exactly. Okay. Please don't take advantage of me. Item 006, Dwight York Stadium. Member for Kearney Central. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm at line, line item 43, Security Services. Uh, I see there's an amount of 1.3 million. And a general observation, the entire vote, this entire 006, is 2.6. Can the minister indicate, you know, um, what is the number of security employed? Um, what is the monthly rate that is paid? Madam Chair, that uh, security services is outsourced. It's yes. um, provided by uh, Hello Security. Mm, and our janitorial services are provided by MTS. Madam Minister, uh, seeing that Dwight York Stadium was built together with three other, three other stadium, uh, stadium in, uh, in, the, in our body year 2000, 2001, um, where does those other stadiums fall, please? I cannot, I so, cannot hear him. We can't allow can't the question him. on the other stadium, the three other stadiums. We could speak about the Dwight York Stadium. So, I had zero 
Minor Equipment Purchases, Item 001, General Administration. Item 002, Physical Education and Sport Division. Item 003, Community Development Division. Item 004, Best Village. Item 005, Mediation Centers. Item 006, Dwight York Stadium. Subhead 04, Current Transfers and Subsidies. Item 005, Non-Profit Institutions, Member for Oropooch West. Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Minister, can you provide a listing of the organizations which would have benefited from your allocation for 2021 under subhead 15 contribution to non-profit institutions? Under subhead 15? Uh, you want uh, the, the organizations? Yes, thank you. Sure. Would it be possible for no, you to No, I want to give provide? it to you right now. That's the purpose of this community. Let me give it to you right now. Since you're okay, providing, okay. can Relates you also to provide sports serving the bodies, the uh, entities that benefited in this fiscal year, we have Memphis Sports Club, we have Forbes Football Visionary Concept, Monks St. George Police Youth Club, Hills United Sport and Cultural Organization, Bethel Sport and Cultural Organization, WI Sports Limited, Eagles Football Club, Black Panthers Women Sport Club, Special Olympics Trinidad and Tobago, VJ Sport and Cultural Club, then you had the TTOC or the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee also receiving funding from that um, vote. We also have the Trinidad and Tobago Chess Association receiving funding from that vote. Uh, CPL was also paid from that vote, outstanding balances from the previous year of hosting CPL. On the same line item, please, um, based on the answer given, the response given by the Honorable Minister. Um, can the Minister indicate uh, what was the procedure for application of this funding? The, this information is available on the Ministry's uh, website. The guidelines for or grant a funding program is on, on on the website. I'm sure you can find it. It's available to the public. Oh, I have the policy here. I can read it to you. It's about a good 10 pages long. I can read it to you. I'll be fine if you send the policy to no, me. No, I'm not sending the policy to you. It's on the website. I want to I wanna see the digital transmission. Answer, will, be able, will, will I be able to see that That's as well? That's my final answer. Member for Cuba North. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 15 contributions to non-profit institutions. Yes. Can the Honorable Minister provide for us in writing a breakdown of all the contributions made to the various non-profit institutions? And the I amounts? just listed. I can do that right now. Yes, he wants to do it again. But as it relates to the Trinidad and Tobago Chess Association, they received $163,200 for the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee. Uh, they received some 2.7 plus dollars for, for, for Olympics, and then they received later on this year $202,953.10 towards their anti-doping efforts. Uh, we then had Memphis Sport Club, which received $5,603. Then there was Forbes Football Visionary Concept. Uh, this is for their one-day female football tournament. They received $35,000.
We had Mount St. George Police Youth Club for their sport development program, $25,478. You have Hills United Sports and Cultural Organization. This is towards uh, the sport development program also, $125,000. Bethel Sport and Cultural Organization for their Community Football League, $39,955. WI Sports Limited for um, sports programming and highlighting sports personalities and so on. It was a communications type of project, $31,500. Eagles Football Club was the purchase of equipment, $43,000. Black Panthers Women's Sports Club, this is towards assisting a primary school sporting club, $13,000. Special Olympics of Trinidad and Tobago, this is towards the rental of the office space, uh, $146,000. And the infamous VJ Sport and Cultural Club coming out of Avocat Faisabad, $12,000 to provide coaching kits for his children, sporting, for coaching program. CPL got an allocation of um, about $3 million towards the, um, the previous CPL. It was an outstanding balance owed to CPL. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Minister. Madam Minister, line item 05, contributions to CBOs. This line item was estimated for in 2021 at $6 million, but it was revised at $1.2 million. Can you kindly explain the reason why it is this, these funds were not utilized towards the contribution to community-based organizations? And can you kindly give us a breakdown of the CBOs that receive contributions from this 1.2 million well, Madam Chair, by um, the quantities that they each receive? Madam Chair, that vote does not cover any contributions to any community-based organization. That vote covers the, uh, the programming for the Ministry's Community Development Division. So like our short skills program, uh, entrepreneurship program, uh, TT online voices where we have something like Dateline where we're talking about different issues. That vote covers the uh, programming for the Community Development Division. It doesn't cover monies to any groups uh, as it relates to Community Development here. So that's the wrong vote. So it, it's a wrong print here or it's the wrong line item I'm because what I'm what seeing here, for. That what is, I'm seeing here. Madam Chair, that's my final answer. No, um, member, maybe sometimes how the vote is classified might not be what it communicates in words. So it may help us sometimes to ask what is done under that vote. Okay? The minister has explained to you, regardless of how we interpret the words here, the minister has explained what this vote is utilized for. Okay? So to ask if it's a misprint or anything like that, I really think is um, uh, a sort of a misunderstanding of what was said to us. Okay. Item 007, households. Member for Kuva North. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, line item 09, National Incentives and Reward Initiative. This was budgeted at $1 million. However, none was utilized in the revised estimate. We're seeing nil. Can the Honorable Minister kindly explain why? Madam Chair, um, because last year you had, this fiscal year you had COVID, so regional and international uh, competitions had been placed on a, a hold or had been stopped. Thank, thank you, Madam Minister. Madam Minister, I'd like to draw your attention to line item 40. Gratuities to contract officers. This was estimated at 4.9 million, but uh, $9 million was actually spent here. Well, from what we are seeing in the revised estimates, mm -hmm. can the minister advise if it is uh, that uh, proper calculations was not conducted in, the in putting together the 2021 estimate uh, 
or the reason why this additional uh, $5.1 million was spent here. Sorry, $4.1 million. Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Chairman, as stated before, this is a new ministry. So we are covering the cost of not just the old community development division, but also uh, the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs. So this covers pretty much two ministries. So that's the reason for uh, this figure. And for the 2022 estimate of $4.9 million under this line item, can the minister identify if there are outstanding gratuity payment to contract officers and what quantities and the number of the number of contract officers that this um, that is uh, are being affected by the outstanding payment my answer to that is i would assume that there are um, outstanding gratuities to be paid and you cannot presume how many at this um, point I don't think you understand how gratuities work. I do understand That's how gratuities. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do understand how gratuities are to be paid. I really would li not like you to answer based on what you assume, but what you know. So but if you don't question? know at this point in time, Madam Minister, it would be okay for you to get the information and provide it to no. us in the future no. in no. writing. No. That's my final answer. All right. So, Minister of Finance, Minister of Finance, yes. Other transfers. Member for Cuba North. Thank you, Madam Minister. Um, Madam Chair, line item 02, Export Center. Can the Minister account for the additional $2.2 million was, that was utilized in 2021? This is for the uh, programming of the export centers. Um, they assist in uh, helping people develop their handicraft skills, getting them certified. And I know during this year they had a, a new program where they helped um, where they helped members of the community to get city and guilds certification and so on. This covers all their programming, Madam Chair. So that's the reason uh, for that. Member for Carney Central. Honourable Minister, uh, I noted that yeah, you indicated before and in the budget statement by the Honourable Minister of Finance, um, I saw that there was a 292,500 line item 08, Trinidad and Tobago Anti-Doping Organization. Um, can you indicate what, what will be achieved in this financial year? Madam Chairman, that allocation is for the payment of RADA and WADA and RADO fees. That's to the regional and the international anti-doping associations. Member for Carney Central. Madam Chair, I'm at line item 04, Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago. I've noticed that there's a increase of approximately $8.4 million in this financial year. Can the minister indicate what will account um, for this decrease in this financial year, having spent 78 million in the last financial year, or having transferred 78 million. What is your question? You, you cannot can, speak better than that? Can you speak more clearly? I cannot hear you. Can you repeat your question, please? Can I speak better than that? I'm not understanding him. I don't know if there's something with his mic. I'm not hearing him clearly. He sounded muffled. Uh, Ma Madam Chair, will you allow the House to be governed in that way? Yes, sir. Excuse me. And the way that this member is speaking to me? I seek, I seek your protection. Member for Carney Central. I seek your protection. Member for Carney Central. Member for Carney Central. Member for Cuba North. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, line item 03, 
indoor sporting arena. Madam Minister, this line item was budgeted at 2.3 million, but only 415 was utilized. Can you kindly advise uh, for the significant decrease in the revised estimate versus that of the estimate for 2021? That is due to uh, the COVID situation. A lot of the activities that happen at all uh, sporting arenas couldn't have taken place. You would have note that many of them were shut over the COVID uh, period. So we're hoping to have a return to play so we could uh, reopen and get going again. Thank you, Madam Minister. Um, Madam Minister, line item 04, Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago, what my colleague for Karani, Karani Central was asking, if I may, is that there is a significant decrease of $8.37 million here for this line item for the Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago, with a revised estimate of $78 million in 2021, but the estimate for 2022 is uh, 69.6 million. Can you kindly advise the reason for the significant decrease in the allocation for 2022? Madam Chair, that is the amount that was allocated to the sport company by the Ministry of Finance. I'm sure we all would like to have more money everywhere, but we have to be mindful of the current economic situation, and that is what the Ministry of Finance has allocated to Sport TT. So we would make do to the best of our ability with the allocation, and if necessary, return to Parliament for an increase. So what we're seeing is a cut, a cut in the sports company of Trinidad and Tobago allocation for the financial year in a budget that is more than last year's budget. Can you kindly advise what aspects of the service being provided by the sports company of Trinidad and Tobago that this reduced allocation is going to compromise? Madam Chair, this, is, uh, this covers the main uh, operations of the sport company uh, from providing assistance to national governing bodies we know that international uh, sporting competitions have been uh, placed on hold under some of the disciplines, and some are more active than others. Uh, so even the ability to uh, conduct physical repair and so on of infrastructure, I expect the sporting company to, re to look at the allocation and see what is going to be done. We also have to remember that the sports company can also um, some of the pro projects, for instance, refurbishment of national stadiums and so on, would be done through loan or of budget financing. So I don't want the, the member to get too hung up on this allocation because uh, of budget financing is available to this state entity. So I don't anticipate any area of suffering. Member for Karani Central. Madam Speaker, it was asked and answered. transfers to state enterprises. Madam Chair? Yes, I had one more question to ask on the line Ma 8, Ma line Can zero I eight. advise that you put it in writing? Sure, sure Please, Madam Chair, and I'm guided accordingly on as this. moving on to this uh, new block that we're moving to. Yes. Zero one one transfer to state enterprise. Yes. I would like to draw the Honourable Minister attention to line item zero one. National Commission for Self-Help Limited. Um, Madam Minister, I am seeing an increase of $383,700 for the upcoming fiscal term of 2022. Madam Minister, I'm fully aware, based on my correspondence and communications with this agency, that several persons who have applied for assistance from the National Commission for Self-Help Limited. Their application had been approved. Their status is approved on the application, but they were not, uh, checks were not disbursed to these individuals. They did not receive the grants that they applied for. Um, they didn't receive the assistance they applied for because of the fact that the agency had limited funding. Can, can you advise uh, if this uh, 383 $1,700 will be sufficient to, to satisfy the outstanding approved applications? 
Uh, this allocation does not cover that. This allocation covers the day-to-day -day operations of uh, the National Self-Help Commission. Uh, I think the member needs to hold his question until later because this is not the allocation for his question. Yeah. Okay, so I, I just want to, member for Coover North, just remind you because it has happened a couple of times that within these books, there's an explanation for the various votes, okay, what they cover. So it's happened repeatedly, you know, in your questioning that I guess, you know, in your um, anxiety to find out certain things, you may have overlooked that there is a key in this book that tells you what the particular votes speak to. Okay, so maybe you'll be guided by that for the remainder of this exercise and surely I will expect that by the time we come to the media review, you'll be fully en courant with the book. Honorable members, you will now move on to the draft estimates of the development program. Subhead 09, development program. Consolidated fund item 004, social infrastructure. Honorable members, item 004 spans two pages. Therefore, I will announce the project groups. A, culture. C, sports. A, community development. Member for Carney Central. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, just one question in respect of line item 03. Um, maybe the minister can correct me, but um, for my reading of this line item, it's a re recovery report costing $10 million. Line item 06. Okay, that's based on the community recovery uh, project where last year a committee was established to um, review, uh, to come up with a community action plan. And the, this allocation is to bring to life or to run the programs under that report. So it's not, not the generation of a report, but to actually implement? To actually implement. And as the chairman said, the explanation for these votes are in the books. Not at all, not all enough. Um, so we move on. Item 005, multi-sectoral and other services. Infrastructure Development Fund, page 250. Item 004, infrastructure. Honorable members, item 004 spans two pages. I therefore will announce the project groups. A, sports. Member for Carney Central. Sports. Uh, honorable minister, I'm looking at, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm C sorry, sports. I'm C at C, C sports. sports. Okay, that's what I'm confused, yes. yes. Thank All you. Right. Um, Line item 011, construction of a swimming pool, Lavantil. Is this another pool besides the, uh, the one that was opened in 2019? This is uh, relating to the same pool. This is to deal with arrears and to deal with some work that uh, WASA had to do at the pool. A, community development. D, youth development. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of 297 Madam million. Chair, I, question. I had my hand up. I wanted to ask a Where question on the C. I wanted to ask a question on the C and also D, youth development. If C, you'll permit me. Sports. All right. Member from Aruga Tableland. And then see, Honorable Minister, with regards to 007, upgrade of corporation grounds, could you itemize for us what grounds was upgraded underneath the $4 million? Up 
grade of cooperation uh, grounds. This boat covers honeymoon recreation ground, Marak recreation ground, Aranguez recreation ground, Grand River uh, recreation ground, and Tuds Road recreation ground. In uh, 2015, in 2021, sorry, we covered Honeymoon, Aranguez, and Marac. Uh, in 2022, um, our grounds already set for this $4 million, so could I suggest the St. Mary's Recreation Ground? This is, um, in 2022, this allocation is to cover uh, contractual obligations for Aranguez, Grand River, Honeymoon, Mara, Park Street, and Todd's Road. So it's completing work that have already started. Noted. Um, also, Honorable Minister, with regards to 017, um, construction of community swimming pools, the 15 million um, allocation, the revised allocation, could you itemize what communities will have benefited? Construction of community swimming pool, 017. The, the allocation is three million dollars for 2022. Yes, sorry, Madam Minister. Could you um, itemize what the 3.9? We utilize the um, this vote covers two swimming pools, Maloney swimming pool, Mova swimming pool, and I know some retendering has to be done for um, the Dabadi uh, Malabar swimming pool. In 2022, we propose to do works at Maloney and Mova, and hopefully we'll uh, get to a place where we can actually move with the Dabadi Malabar. Okay. Also, with regards to A, community development, um, construction. So you're, you're moving on to A now? Yeah. Okay. Questions on the C and D. She said C and D. If you'll permit me, uh, Madam Chair, construction of um, centers or at least refurbishment, because I do have. Which to one do you want? There are two different votes, and it will help if you'll identify them by. I will take um, 003, con um, refurbishment of community centers. Right. So we under A, community development. Zero, zero, 003, yes. All right, now I would just like to suggest that the minister would consider refurbishment of the Kunjal Community Center and Strange Village. And I will ask my question on the need B, if the minister could itemize what um, the additional $3 million with regards to the Murga Multipurpose Youth Facility as it was declared completed. Madam Chair, the zero, zero, 003, covers a refurbishment of centers in 2021. Refurbishment will continue on Shend Street uh, Community Center, which is at 56% uh, completion. In 2022, we are going to complete the work that had already started and uh, look at commencing work at Damari, La Saiva, um, Lower El Dorado, Balmain, Bazijo, Maracas Bay, and La Hapita Regional Complex. Her next question was on D, Moruga. What was your question on Moruga? Um, the additional $3 million that is allocated in 2022. Could you minister since the facility was deemed completed and handed to Sports City? The facility was completed and handed to Sports City, but we still owe the contractor. Um, Sport City is right now working on getting uh, service providers to do security and that type of thing at uh, the facility. So, honorable members, the question is that the sum of $297,761,000 for Head 79 Ministry of Sport and Youth and, sorry, and Community Development stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. Those again say no. I think the eyes have it. The sum of $297,761,000 for Head 79, Ministry of Sport and Community Development, now stands part of the schedule. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, PS. Thank you, other representatives of the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. Head 38, Environmental Commission. Head 38, Environmental Commission. 
Members, we are on page 223 of the draft estimates of recurrent. I will now invite the Minister of Finance to make a brief opening statement. Thank you. The Environmental Commission is a superior court of record, which is the premier environmental court in the region, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, setting the trend in environmental decision making and the utilization of case management methodology and court information technology. The Environmental Commission provides an alternative dispute resolution process dealing specifically with environmental disputes arising under the law. It interprets and applies the law to protect the rights of all citizens while being cognizant of the need for the balancing of economic growth with environmentally sound principles. Honourable Members, the question is that the sum of $5,905,640 for Head 38 Environmental Commission stand part of the schedule. Honourable Members, the sum of $5,905,640 for Head 38 Environmental Commission is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. We shall now proceed to consider the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. Subhead 01, personal expenditure item 001, general administration. Subhead 02, goods and services item 001, general administration. Subhead 03, minor equipment purchases item 001, general administration. Honorable Members, the question is that the sum of $5,905,640 for Head 38 Environmental Commission stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The sum of $5,905,640 for Head 38 Environmental Commission now stands part of the schedule. Thank you, Minister. Thank you for the representatives from the Environmental Commission, the Registrar, and so on. Head 37, Integrity Commission. Head 37, Integrity Commission, $7,241,940. Head 37, Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I will now invite the Minister of Finance to make a brief opening statement, not exceeding five minutes. The Integrity Commission is a constitutional body created by sections 138 and 139 of the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and established by section four of the Integrity and Public Life Act. 
That act in that section also provides for the membership of the commission, that is to say a chairman, a deputy chairman, and three other members. All members of the commission are required to be persons of integrity and high standing. The powers and functions of the commission are prescribed in section five of the act, and in exercising its powers, the commission is not subject to the direction or control of any other personal authority, may make use of the services, any services that it wishes, draw upon the expertise of any law enforcement agency, enter into contracts for the services of persons, having technical or specific knowledge of any matter, and have the power to authorize investigations, summon witnesses, require the production of reports, documents, and other relevant information, and do anything it considers necessary or expedient for the purpose of carrying out its functions. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of $7,241,940 for Head 57 Integrity Commission stand part of the schedule. Honorable members, the sum of $7,241,000 $940 for Head 57, the Integrity Commission is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure and the draft estimates of the development program. We shall now proceed to consider the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. We are at page 219, subhead 01, personal expenditure, item 001, general administration. Subhead 02, Goods and Services, Item 001, General Administration. Subhead 03, Mine Equipment Purchases, Item 001, General Administration. Subhead 04, Current Transfers and Subsidies, Item 007, Households. Honorable Members, we will now move on to the draft estimates of the development program, subhead 09, development program, consolidated fund, we are at page 83, item 005, multi-sectoral and other services. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of $7,241,940 for Head 37, Integrity Commission stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The sum of $7,241,940 for Head 37 Integrity Commission now stands part of the schedule. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Register. Head 07. Statutory authorities. Service Commission. Head 07, Statutory Authority Service Commission, $6,090,731. I will now invite the Minister of Finance to make a brief opening statement, not exceeding five minutes. Minister. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The Statutory Authorities Service Commission is an independent body established by Act No. 16 of 1966. <coughs> like other service commissions, it has its origins in the British Civil Service. The Act gives the Commission the power to appoint persons to hold or act in offices and to transfer, promote, remove and exercise disciplinary control over persons so appointed. It regulates its own procedure with the consent of the Prime Minister and has specific responsibility for some areas of government, notably the two cities, the two boroughs, and some other statutory bodies within the Republic. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of six million $90,731 for Head 07, Statutory Authority Service Commission, stand part of the schedule. Honorable members, the sum of $6,090,731 for Head 07, 
Statutory Authority Service Commission is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. We are page 35. Subhead 01, personal expenditure. Item 001, general administration. Subhead 02, goods and services. Item 001, general administration. Subhead 03, minor equipment purchases. Item 001, general administration. Subhead 04, current transfers and subsidies. Item 007, households. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of $6,090,731 for head 07, Statutory Authority Service Commission, stand part of the schedule. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The sum of $6,090,731 for head 07, Statutory Authority Service Commission, now stands part of the schedule. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Sermon. This is statutory. Honorable members, the question is that the sum of $43,805,107,458 for be approved as a grand total. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The question is that the schedule now stands part of the bill. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The schedule now stands part of the bill. Clauses one to three. The question is that clauses one to three stand part of the bill. The question is that clauses one to three now stand part of the bill. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. Clauses one to three now stand part of the bill. Honorable members, the question is that the appropriation financial year 2022 bill 2021 be now reported to the House. All in favor say aye. aye. Any against? The ayes have it. The bill shall now be reported to this House. Honorable, uh, just before the Standing Finance Committee is now adjourned and the House will now be suspended, the, the committee, this meeting is now adjourned. We shall suspend and resume in the house in 15 minutes. So it is now 6.24. So we will resume at 6.40.